Hey everyone, Miranda Patron back here with you to just do a fun, quick ornament. I found these cute little coffee mug wood shapes at Dollar Tree and some adorable little laser cut adornments to add to it. So if you don't have a Dollar Tree, you could just grab one of these cute little mugs off of Etsy or Amazon or just go Google wood mug shapes or coffee mug wood. Some people call them MDF, but they're everywhere. So this is mine. And I'm going to just use a couple of things. We have some Waverly chalk paint. You could use any white chalk paint or any color for that matter if you want a different mug color. I'm going to put it on with a sponge brush. I have some Molotil liquid chrome here. It's a marker pen and we'll be using that. Here are my things from the Dollar Tree. This is just a laser cut little heart. Super cute. They have lots of embellishments. And then this is just the MDF flat piece of wood cut out in the shape of a mug. And then a couple of colors here, the espresso and sterling silver from DecoArt. So I'm just using the sponge brush to quickly apply a coat. I'm just doing one coat and it dries in kind of like a vanilla, vanilla color. Um, so I just spread it out and it actually dries pretty quick, chalk paint. And I'm actually going to leave it matte at the end and not varnish it because I really, really love the matte color that it provides. Let's flip it this way. We'll get the handle too. And this will give us a good base background for our mug here. Alrighty, so I'm going to take my etcher. In my eye, like in my mind, I kind of see where the lines go. But just so you guys can see it. This the edge of the mug is here, and I'm kind of just kind of sketch across, etch across. You can do this with a pencil too if you need that line. And this will just kind of show where the top of the mug goes because we're gonna have some like cream on the top of our latte here, some foam, and that'll just delineate the two sections. So you can kind of see there where I etched it in to the paint. Works a little better on black paint, but all right. So now I'm going to grab my Molotow liquid chrome. It's already been shaken and I pushed down on the nib, so it's already ready to go here. And I'm just going to follow that line along the edge to just kind of show where the rim of my mug is here. Plus, it gives a little bit of bling to our coffee cup. I just did two rows of that thickness and then I'm going to outline this cute little handle here. There's not really much in the way of mandalas and stuff you can do in a handle. And I do love to try to fit them in these shapes, but this one is just going to be a simple, quick, fun little ornament for your tree this year or to give us a quick gift to your favorite coffee lover. <laughs> So that's where our heart is going to go in the center. So I'm actually going to outline the bottom here too to just kind of highlight the rim and the base. And so I do the bottom first and kind of come up in the U shape and then I can kind of see the space in between to fill it in there. And so you can see how shiny that is. I also, I'm not going to varnish it because it will, it'll stay shiny like that on that part. But then I, the rest can be matte. So I'm going to take one of my angled styluses. We're going to use the Sterling Silver Extreme Sheen from DecoArt. And we're going to give some swipes up here to kind of show our swirly cream at the top. Foam. Whatever you have on the top of your latte cappuccino those type of drinks. And the sterling silver too is another really shiny paint. So again, it's, you almost don't have to do the varnish because these are all shiny. And then the matte cup, just, it's a great contrast. So we're going to start up there in the swoop and just do two little swipes across. And then I think off to the side here, we'll just kind of show a little bit and kind of hook it around. And bring it across 
And that'll give a little swirl to our mug here too. All right, so now we're gonna get an opportunity to, after we do these couple swipes, I grabbed a set of the Happy Dotting Company tools to check out Angela's new tool she has here. So I'm kind of super excited about these. So they have nice flat ends on the larger ones from the Happy Dotting Company. And they are sized so we can do patterns and say, hey, I'm using the 7.0 end now or the 6.5, whatever. So it's good for reference. I think it's a really great idea. So I'm going to use the 7.0 end now still with the sterling silver and it seems like it makes a great dot. I like the um, acrylic rods. I had been using some of those to try out the larger dots, but these work very well too. So then I can kind of size down too because there is a huge assortment here of tools all the way down to ones with a very, very fine point. There's 14 double-ended tools. You can see you can go smaller. This one's a 3.5. And we'll just keep using the same color through here. I love this shiny sterling silver. And you know it looks white, but it's this it's called sterling silver for their extreme sheens at Deco Art, but I love it. You can see even kind of my liquid chrome on here looks a little white. It's my bright light here for working under, but so you're just going to kind of fill in after you do three large dots. I kind of just do as many of the big ones as possible and then work my way down in size, just filling in as much as I can without overlapping. And then go to a smaller size, fill in as much as I can, go to the next smaller size that I can fit and just kind of like that. So see, they, they go down pretty small here. But that's usually how I do my fill work as well. So if you have larger space, just do your largest dots first and then kind of work your way down in size of the tools. This one even has a little point on this end. I'm just working my way to the smaller sizes. This is the 1.5. And we're just kind of fill working it in to any spaces that you can see that are still open. How's everybody doing? I've missed you all. I know I've had three ornaments in a row here, but I've been busy for the holiday market here, as you can see. So I thought I'd just share a couple with you. That'd be fun. Plus the Dollar Tree had great cutouts this year. All right, so how fitting. We're gonna use espresso on our latte here. <laughs> and it's one of the, um, it's actually rich espresso. It's one of the deco art metallics. It's not the extreme sheen, it's just a dazzling metallic. So I'm going to kind of line it up with the ornament hole dot up top and then using this size we're just going to work our way over here. I'm not sure I haven't ever used these tools before so I don't know if it'll lock the dots out. I don't know if it keeps enough on the tool but there's such an awesome array of sizes here. Let's see. Yeah, it's probably better to just switch to the next size down as you work your way down. You can do progressive sized dots. So I'm going to keep dipping here so I keep about that same size dot that we started here with the 2.0. And then we'll let the dots get a little smaller as we work our way out to the edge. So I'm just counting here to kind of make sure I have it even. <laughs> and then we'll just let it walk out on here. But I might actually just flip it to the smaller tool so I can get an adequate amount of paint. I see that last one didn't really, so I'm just gonna flip it, dip it, and we'll dot it on there. And that works fine. So but that's the hand thing. Just flip it and dip it and then go to the next. 
and it's progressively down in size. So that worked out. And I think two, so we'll, that's our rim. So I'm going to go back to the two and we're going to get it in line with the same one. I just kind of eyeball it. If you guys want to draw grid lines, that's all you can just put some grid lines on to help you out or measure over how far that dot at the top is the opening. But I like to just eyeball my art and go for it. <laughs> and then just flip it and dip it. The smaller one you could kind of walk out a little bit. These big ones will keep dipping it to make sure that we have the same size. See, it goes down. So we'll go to the smaller end so that we can just kind of let it run off our tool here this way. And there you have the top and the bottom. So I'm going to do the handle here too. I have to turn it towards me just so I can hold on to it here. But, and I'm using the same size, the number two. And we'll just kind of try to stay in between those two silver outlines that we drew to fill it in here on the handle of our mug. So anybody who's new to dotting, this is a good kind of like basic practice in dotting in a couple of swipes. And you can use other tools to do this with. You can use brushes, you can use the styluses, you can use anything around your home that you can dip and try. So there we have the outline of our mug. So now it's time for our heart adornment here. These are just the laser cut shapes. This side's darker and more finished, so I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to use the um, E600, 6000. <laughs> um, glue. So with this one, you just want to make sure you keep it on the edges of whatever you're gluing and not, especially with these laser cut images, because it'll squish out through the holes of the laser cut image. So you just, I'm going to apply it with the etcher. I just kind of drag it along the majority of the thicker spaces on these laser cut items. Embellishments. I don't even know what to call these things. <laughs> They're super cute, that's all I'll call them. But thankfully the glue is pretty forgiving. As you can see, I was working with glitter on a couple other pieces, so I'm covered, it's spilled, but just disregard that. <laughs> and see, I just kind of smooth it out a little bit here on the thicker parts of the heart. And then you just kind of, I have to turn towards me here again so I can look at it probably. because I eyeball everything. I just need to see it from the point of view that I can tell. But you just line it up where you would like it on your mug and then just kind of gently press it into place. Try not to slide it too much because on the sides you'll see the glue will show a bit. But thankfully it's clear and it does peel off easily. And there we have our little mug. Merry Christmas, coffee lovers. I found this adorable ribbon too at the Dollar Tree. It's got little hearts on it, and so I usually just take my ribbons and then I put a layer of glue on one side of the ribbon, and then I'll put it on the top side of both ribbons, and then I'll glue it to the back. You could also string something through the hole of your ornament, but I don't like to cover up the um, design, <laughs> so I use these silicone tools to just kind of apply. You could use a paintbrush or anything. Try not to touch it with your hands though. This is like probably not good to get on your skin. It's industrial strength. Lord knows what's in it. But then I just press them together and then put it on the top as well because this is the side of the ribbon that we want showing. Grab our little mug here and kind of line it up with that hole. But see, that way too, it's not blocking your design. Because if you thread it through the hole, it would be blocking your design. And then it would be... But see, the glue came out on that too. But I can just peel that off. And then I just kind of press it into the back. 
and it holds. I use rocks, I do heavy things with the glue and, and ribbon. So you can see I made a couple of them here. This one's black back and it's a little bit of a different heart. And then you have our ribbons on both. So I have a couple of great ornaments to show. Hope you guys enjoyed this and that it was uh, a fun, just get a creation out of it pretty quick. So, and these are great to give as gifts. I love them. I, if you have an ornament exchange coming up, it's a great idea for an ornament exchange. Um, lots of fun ideas I have going through my head all the time. They keep me up at night. So <laughs> figured I'd share a few with you. I hope you've enjoyed them. If you haven't yet, feel free to go check out the Christmas tree one and I have a snowman one as well that have some pretty fun designs on them so some of them are a little folksy it's getting kind of fun I'm enjoying it I hope you are too so let me know in the comments what you think and as always happy painting